everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. So today I bring to you the Colourist Special Effects 3. So this is the third book in the series by Helen Elliston. Now these books are colouring tutorial books so it takes you step by step through how to create beautiful textures and different kind of colouring skills in your pages. It's very very simple, it's for all um, it, all ages, all talent levels, you know, all kind of skill levels, it doesn't matter, it's very, very clearly explained and uh, as you can see, the results are absolutely stunning because Helen is a proper artist, so she knows what she's doing with these tutorials, she knows how to make things look hyper-realistic and beautiful, so you're getting taught from a master here. Now the first book looked like this, Colourist Special Effects, and they all contain different tutorials, these books, so you need all of them. <laughs> you can't just buy one and expect to get everything. You need all three because they are all packed with the most amazing um, tutorials. So I'll just go through it really quickly. This first book, we've got gems, we've got beetles, we've got uh, metal, we've got lanterns and how to create a glow. We've got gold, we've got... Um, animal fur and flowers and raindrops and hair and skin and all sorts so that was the first book the second book looks like this and this again contains totally different um, tutorials so we've got fabric taffeta different parts of the body and how to color skin highlights shadows uh, we've got steampunk things like metal cogs uh, we've got unicorn horns, skulls, uh, terracotta, marbles, domes, lighthouse. I mean, it's just, it's packed. It's absolutely packed. The third book does not disappoint. It is the perfect um, sequel, so to speak, to the previous two books. So it's absolutely fantastic. As you can see depicted on the cover, we've got quite a few of the things that are inside. We've got sand, gingham fabric, honeycombs, uh, rainbows, fruit, elephant skin, teddy bear fur, and then on the back there's even more. We've got um, a brick background, we've got topiary, uh, a tennis ball, a fried egg, you know, there's some like wild cards thrown in there. We've got um, vegetables, we've got, oh, that's a veg, no, it's not, it's a fruit, it's got seeds, sorry, I, I digress. <laughs> um, we've got CDs, we've got flowers, we've got honey pots, bees, just, just all sorts. So, it's an absolutely fantastic book and a very worthy addition to the series. Now, I've become quite good friends with Helen over the time she's been doing these books. We speak quite a lot online and um, I'm obviously not going to go into, you know, personal things. But I have to tell you that um, Helen has been facing some just incredible adversity throughout the time that she's been putting this book together which is about a year a year or something I think um, and it's just seemed to have been one after another after another blow 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 um, to her so I, I just I, I at first I just really want to say thank you to Helen for continuing with this and pushing through and creating another amazing book for us and you know just to let you guys know that she's been going through it while she's been doing this book and to still have brought it out and um, you know, have created this amazing thing for us. It's a real feat and um, just want to say thank you, Helen, really. So let's get into the book itself and I can show you some of the tutorials inside. So we open it up and it's just this little bit of blurb at the front telling you about the book and um, giving you Helen's links and things like that. Then we've got the index here so you can see all of the things that are going to be inside the book. So it's all into categories. So we've got one, two, three, four, five categories. The first is empty shapes. So a lot of times in colouring books, colouring pages, you'll find a lot of empty space, um, especially in the kind of simpler illustrations. You might find just a, a circle that could be turned into a gem or, you know, uh, anything. It could be turned into anything. And Helen in this section is showing you how to fill those empty spaces with something really awesome and realistic looking. So first of all, we've got a fried egg and a realistic egg. We've got rainbow discs, glassy triangle, glassy square. I'll go through them, but uh, the actual categories are empty shapes, flowers, nature, miscellaneous, and then background and structure. So the first one that you can see we've got here is the fried egg. Now, as with all of Helen's tutorial books, she does the steps digitally so that you can actually see where a new uh, a new layer has been put onto the uh, the illustration, if that makes sense. So you can see here we've just got plain yellow, and then you can see where she's um, 
where she's put the next layer of yellow, the darker, the orange. And then the next layer is this bit here and then the next layer this here and then the next here. So she does it digitally for a reason. It's not like um, she doesn't want to do it step by step by hand. Um, it do, it's for a reason so that you can see physically each layer as it goes on. Um, and then she will show you right at the end what her coloured pencil finished image looks like. So this is the actual finished or hand finished uh, egg here. But every step is digital so that you can see each layer. So uh, this one is a 17 step tutorial, but a lot of them are much simpler than that. And as you can see, it just turns out incredibly, incredibly well. And then you've got a little egg here for you to actually try it inside the book or you can trace it or, you know, draw your own on a different piece of paper. We've then got a realistic egg. So actually getting that kind of matte finish of an eggshell again digitally because you can see each layer going on. Uh, I think if you did it with um, coloured pencil by hand, you wouldn't be able to see each distinct step. So that's why it's done digitally. Uh, this is the second part of the egg. So this is how it looks when it's been done with coloured pencil. And I, I really like that Helen has actually done every single one herself with coloured pencil and put it in here so that we can see what it's meant to look like in real, so to speak, because you can use that as a reference. So when you're going through all of these digital steps, because obviously it's not going to look like this, it's going to look a lot smoother. Um, you can keep referring back to what the finished article looks like and then you can kind of try and emulate that yourself. This is a 3D glassy triangle. So if you find yourself with a triangular shape on your colouring pages, you can create a 3D piece of glass. And it's just so, so realistic. Incredible. We've got glassy stars here. So this is how it turns out. It's even got a shadow behind it. So you could have it hanging from a moon illustration or just anything you want. This is a glassy square. So it's kind of a curved square as well. And it just... I would never know how to do this without looking at how it's depicted here. So if someone said, can you make this this empty square look like glass? I'd probably just put a few flicks over it and that'd be like, yeah, that's it, me done. But you can see with Helen's artistic knowledge and her background that by adding these kind of curved shapes and where you're putting your darks and your lights, you know, I would never have known to do that without this book. So, you know, it, it just it's hyper realistic. We've got glass butterflies. So if you have a uh, an empty butterfly, you can create it with glass again with flowers. So um, I just love how this looks really deep. It's like you can almost pick it up and then you've got the, the shadow, the drop shadow on the page as well to make it look even more real. We've got glass hearts. We've got glass ovals. We've got a glassy hexagon. So if you do have a book that's got a lot of honeycomb in it, but you want to do something a little bit different, you can make it into glass. We've got turning circles into tennis balls. So just look at this amazing finished tennis ball here. It looks so real. Uh, I know I keep saying that, but Helen's stuff is just so amazing. Um, she really makes it look incredible. So you can fill your circle with a tennis ball. Um, we've got circles into bubblegum bubbles. So how to put your, your highlights and things onto a, um, a circle to make it look like a bubble and also remembering to uh, leave the features of the lips and the nose behind the bubble so it looks see-through and it kind of looks a little bit translucent or transparent so this is turning circles into cds so you can see how to create this gorgeous effect of um, shimmer and it's kind of like a shimmery rainbow isn't it so yeah really really awesome and then you've got your practice sheet so we've got cd to practice a fried egg a butterfly a tennis ball and you can obviously um copy that you can uh photocopy it whatever trace it do it again and again so we're on to the flower section now and we've got a textured tulip and just look at that texture it is really really beautiful you can almost imagine the kind of silky feel of the petals and uh yeah that's a really nice one they're all beautiful we've got orchids so you can see how it turns out here at the bottom. You can add some pink in there if you wanted to, or you can leave it as a traditional orchid color. We've got cherry blossoms. We've got crocus. And I really like how the line art is on this page as well. So you don't have to keep flipping to another page to do your practicing. You can do it on the page if you want to. We've got a pansy. We've got a fuchsia. We've got a bleeding heart flower, which is absolutely gorgeous. We've got a cactus, so you can see again this kind of texture with the spikes. We've got a sunflower, 
I'm going to finish some flowers here. We've got delicate bluebells. These ones are really, really light and sweet. Then you've got your practice page again for you to do even more practicing. Then we're into the next section, which is glorious nature. And the first one here is a beautiful, sparkling waterfall. This would be awesome in uh, Magical Jungle by Johanna Basford because she has that image with the waterfall in the background and the elephant, which, as you can see, is coming soon. So that'd be awesome for that. Um, I keep saying the word awesome. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. Then we've got starfish. We've got fire coral for your underwater scenes. We've got lily pads, which just look beautiful, shiny, rubbery. We've got trees. So if you've wondered about colouring um, the texture of tree bark, there you go. That's how it looks on the finished article. Also, the silver birch, which I have to say is one of my favourite tutorials from this book so far, because if you just look at the finished piece that Helen's done with coloured pencil, you can just see how amazingly realistic this looks. You can see the shine, but it also looks kind of rough as well really really good um four leaf clover this is how it turns out very glassy looking again very 3d and then kind of a zoomed in look at tree bark if you want to really intricately create that texture this is how you can do that we've got the elephant skin that i was talking about earlier that we saw on the cover how to create that kind of look of um uh, sort of sort of a rough sort of texture isn't it an elephant skin but it's quite wrinkly so it's how to create that look then we've got bamboo we've got the honeycomb that we saw on the front here and this is the finished piece so you can see how it will look um, and then you can vary it so she's telling you vary where you're putting all of your highlights and shadows so that each comb looks different we don't want them all to look exactly the same I did a honeycomb tutorial and I did them all exactly the same and even though I'm really pleased with how it turned out you can see just by variation how it looks even better this is the honey pot that we saw on the back finished article here with the coloured pencil then we've got bees so how to create these lovely buzzy fluffy bees we've got splashing waves from the surf how to create the foam look and then you've got your practice sheet this is miscellaneous fun so this is all kinds of different things that don't fit into any of the other categories this here is a 3d filigree looks almost like chrome just an incredible incredible realism there you can see the blue really really adds to the look of the metal you wouldn't think really to add blue um, but it really brings it out We've then got how to do a pencil. So oftentimes in colouring books, you'll have actual illustrations that are based on colouring supplies, like, you know, a pencil pot or what, what have you. And you might want to know how to colour a pencil. And there you go. So we've got textured teddy bear fur here, which I really adore because there are so many kind of um, whimsical, very charming, childlike illustrations uh, available you know with little girls holding their teddies and things like that so this is going to be really useful for that we've then got a bit of pastry so a lovely buttery croissant here as you can see it's so is there another word for realism because I feel I'm saying words too much I'm repeating myself but you can just see how incredible it is a juicy watermelon slice it really does look lovely and uh, lovely and juicy and fresh doesn't it We've then got planets. So this particular planet is showing a dark side. So you've got all of your highlights here on the left and then all of your darkness here. So how to create that look of three dimension. We've then got a glowing planet. So how to create this glow, this kind of orb around it and also doing a bit of a, a hazy galaxy background in there as well. Uh, that's the end of the glowing planet. Then we've got a magical fairy door, which is gorgeous just look I love all the different pinks and yellows that are in this and it just looks beautiful it really does then we've got stone so applying them to arches buildings fairy doors anywhere in your illustrations and your coloring books that have stone this tutorial will work so you can see just by adding a bit of orange again something I wouldn't have thought to have done really just brings out the stone you know it's it's, it's amazing she is incredible um, this is a golden doorknob, so again, for you to add to your fairy doors or anywhere you like. So just showing you how to create that look of a spherical kind of um, three-dimensional object. We've then got a rope texture, which is again, just really, really amazing. Um, maybe you've got some, 
what's the word I'm grasping for? Maybe you've got some nautical illustrations, there you go, that's got kind of rope and things, and you wanna create that realistic look, there you go. So this, sorry, we're into a new category now, backgrounds and structures. This is probably my favorite category out of the whole book because I just love creating new textures. And um, this is a starburst background. So you can see your illustration would be in the middle and then you can create a starburst around it. We've then got a mountain background. So just from scratch, creating a mountain background. So if you've got a completely blank background on your coloring page, but you wanna create a landscape, she takes you through that step by step and look what you end up with. I'm not saying that everyone's work is gonna match Helen's by the end of it, mine doesn't for sure, but it, it's giving you that chance to experiment and do something that you might not have had the confidence to do before. We've got a grassy meadow, so you can see how this looks at the end. I often struggle with grass because it's all just flicks and strands and it just ends up looking a bit messy, but this looks really, it's got a lot of depth to it. We've then got the topiary that we saw on the back cover. So you can see this is just a topiary ball, but you can also do it with bushes and different shapes of topiary as well. And you can add little bits of yellow and add bits of um, fruit and lemons and, and oranges and whatever else you wanna add to it. So uh, this is an antique music sheet background. So it's showing you how to use a instant coffee and um, a light you know like a flame so that you can burn the edges of the thing like you would do at school if you're doing a history project we used to do that so you used to get a lighter and burn the edges obviously you need supervision for that um if you're young uh and then you've got the the music notes that go on top of it there we've then got the gingham fabric which is absolutely stunning you can see here it really shows you where to put the the shadows in your folds and then you can trace that and, and practice We've then got the sand, which is one that I did myself, as you will see here on the uh, video that I'm going to overlay. And I really, really enjoyed doing this, actually. I, even from step one, I thought that would just do. It looks it looks really good as it is with step one. But then you start to add more colours, um, start to add more depth and definition. And it just turns out really, really, really well. Um, obviously, it's not as brilliant as Helen's, as I've mentioned before. I don't think, unless you're a, a true... Um, truly talented artist that you're going to get to that level but I'm really happy with how mine turned out and um, yeah so this is a sparkling rainbow background which is absolutely gorgeous I love how it fades away into the distance we've then got a marble which is another one that I tried from this book again it turned out really really well it was quite simple it took me about 15 minutes to do it and uh, I'll probably be quicker next time because I know what I'm doing now and again, this was done with some different materials. So it's not all colouring pencils. This one was done with graphite pencils. So just a normal HB pencil with a Q-tip to smudge. I used a tortillion or a paper stump and then a little bit of black pencil. So really, really simple, quick and easy, but very effective. We've then got a brick background. So if you want to uh, do your rustic bricks, you can do that here. We've got raindrops on a smoky glass which is a really unusual one, but it looks awesome. Then we've got a kind of fun technique that Helen demonstrated on one of her live videos on Facebook not too long ago. And this is whereby you, um, you scribble some color onto a piece of paper. You then put a blank sheet of paper underneath it, use a hard nibbed biro to draw over it. And then when you take your sheet off, you will have the colored uh, the coloured image, wherever you put the lines, it will be the colour that you put down, if that makes sense. I don't know, I'm really crap at explaining things, but really, really fun technique. Uh, then we've got a glittery metallic feather, which is really nice. It looks like it's got some glitter or snow on top of it. And then we've got a page that Helen has made up of all the different components that she's given us so far in the book. So you can create an actual piece, a full piece. So we've got the one here with the elephant, the waterfall, the topiary, the flowers which has been coloured by Helen by hand here, so you can see the finished piece. We've then got the uh, teddy bear with the rope and the uh, sunflowers and all the different things, again, finished on the back for you to see. We've got more pieces for you to practise on. We've got the honeycomb here with the bees. And then we've got some shapes to place over your mistakes. So if you do do something uh, not to your liking, you can cut these out. You can um, photocopy them again and again, cut it out and then pop them over the top. 
and uh, you'll have rectified your page without having to lose it. So there we go, that is the end of the book. As you can see, I've been going on and on about this for ages now, so it really is packed. It's packed full of tutorials. It's, it doesn't scrimp. So um, yeah, also I wanna mention before I leave that um, the colors that Helen tells you to use are in Prismacolor, which is one of the most common pencil sets. Pretty much everyone has a few Prismacolors. Um, so I think that she's tried to keep it really accessible in that way. Um, so you can see she tells you exactly which pencil to use, Process Red PC994, Permanent Red 122. So it's really nice for the artist not just to say use a red, use a light brown, use a turquoise blue. You've got the actual colours here. And even if you don't have Prisma colours, you can see what shade she's using and then try and match it up to whatever sets you have. So just really, really helpful. And all throughout the book, you get these little tips as well to um, help you hone your skills so the book is available on amazon i'm going to leave the links in the description for you to go and buy yourself a copy i really really would recommend this book and it's not just because i'm friends with helen it is as you can see because it is it is done with so much love so much um talent and so much time and effort has been put into this especially with everything that's been going on with helen and um it, she really 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 deserves this book to do well so thank you very very much for watching let me know in the comments what you think of this book and i will see you soon on color with claire